Welcome to Raw and Real Heart to Heart Conversations. And I am Marjorie Chapman, uh, owner and founder of Big Bold Love uh, Life Coaching. And I am currently in the Florida Keys. And there are many things I canceled being down here, but uh, this conversation with my dear friend Don Farley is not one of them. <laughs> so here we are. I am so excited to be with you and thank you. And like, I can actually feel that chill energy coming right through the screen. <laughs> like uh, the, the keys are really an incredible place to be. Like it really, yeah. Yeah. So I'm anxious to hear about your, your travels and what all, you know, yeah. I mean, I've been seeing some Instagram posts and some, you know, things like that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been good. You know, we booked this before the pandemic um, because this, we have a timeshare and, and this timeshare is, is hard to get into. Oh. Um, and now that we're down here, I can see why it's, it's small. So, you know, of course it books up faster. And um, so, yeah, we booked this or Dave booked this before the pandemic for our anniversary. We just celebrated our eighth eighth year married and we did the math and that means we've been together nine and a half years so this november we will be celebrating a decade together which is pretty wild no yeah right (laughs) you know for both of us a decade in for our first marriages was um was definitely the end (laughs) so it's uh it's kind of wild just to yeah have been together so long and to see how our relationship has grown and deepened and yeah well look so you know everybody wants to know right and like you know you are big bold love right i mean that's the name of your business the owner and founder of big bold love and to have a quote-unquote successful thriving marriage at nearly 10 years if there are three things that you could point to as the source of that you are very much in love and that it's not, you know, jump in the shark at this point, right? Like you're, you know, there's still like, you know, 10 years isn't like the wall. (laughs) No, it really feels like the beginning of something. (laughs) Okay. Which is really awesome. And more about that. Um, So what am I saying more about Three things that... Um, yeah, like three things, if you can point to what's at the source of having it still feel like it's a thriving marriage. I think one of the things is that we both we both come at the relationship from how can we make the other person's life better, right? Like we listen for what matters to the other person instead of trying to convince them of what matters to us. Right? Mm. So, you know, I, I think I've talked on here before, but you know, it's really important for Dave that the kitchen is clean. The counters are wiped off. I may, if, if I'm left to my own devices, I'll let the dishes pile up and then I'll just like tackle it all at once and do it all. I, yeah. I love to clean great. a big mess. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> um, I will, I will avoid the hell out of it until I can't anymore and then I'll take care of it. But you know, one of the things I, I do frequently is and probably not as frequently as he'd like, but, but more frequently than I would choose to, uh, you know, is, is I'll, I'll do dishes. I'll wipe down counters. I'll, you know, I have my eye on the kitchen because I know how important it is for him. Um, You know, so things like that, um, that don't necessarily matter to us, but we know that they matter to the other person. And even if we can't understand, I mean, that I can understand why it matters to him, but you know, there are things about me and of course I can't come up with any off the top of my head, but that I think he would probably say, I don't know why this is important, but you know, he does them for me. Um, so, you know, that would definitely so sounds like one. Yeah. You know, what I'm hearing is that you've really taken on the commitment to 
I mean, yes, you know, things that are important to each other, but like you've gotten, you, you are able to get clear and he's able to get clear what really matters and then yeah. come to that agreement of, you know, you don't really care about the dishes, but it's something that he really cares about. So you're willing to take that on yeah. because he cares about it. Yeah. Like that yeah, language of love. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, like doing those little things that, that we know matter, um, you know, physical touch is really important to Dave. So um, you know, I, I will, it, that's just always on my radar. So if I, you know, let's say he's, you know, at the counter and I'm walking past him in the kitchen because our, our kitchen is between our bedroom and the rest of the house. So, you know, I'll put my hand on his shoulder and, you know, just kind of run my hand along his shoulders as I walk by, which, you know, I may not do just myself, um, but I know it matters to him just any little time that I can put some physical touch in, I do, even, you know, if for me, take it or leave it, because that's not my primary love language, but it is his. Right. Um, so, and, and I, think, I think one of the things that really gave us a great foundation, and we don't use it very much anymore, but at the beginning we really did, and I think it laid a foundation for vulnerable conversation, um, and that is saying what you don't want to say. Mm. So, you know, from a place of sharing yourself, right? Not, okay, what I don't want to say is I really hate your haircut, right? Like, that's not what I'm talking about, right? And that was not personal to you, right? Like, just, you know, you could, you could use that as a <laughs> hidden way to, you know, be mean, uh, but no, like what I don't want to say is um, when we were talking and you looked at your watch, I, you know, it totally took me out. And, and I realized you may have just been looking at your watch, but I made it mean that you weren't listening or, you know, whatever that might look like. Right. Yeah. Um, because it, it shares something. Um, and what we found is that in taking on, we took on that we were going to do that every night at the beginning of our relationship. And I, I especially took that on because at the beginning, I really struggled with saying the things that bothered me. Mm. Um, you know, I thought it was going to make him go away or, um, you know, upset him or, <laughs> and so I really took on that every night there was going to be something that I could share that didn't work for me that day. And, um, you know, we came up with some foundation blocks for that, right? You can't use anything said there in an argument as, you know, a weapon later, you know, things like that, um, to really create it as a, as a safe space, safe space. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I think that really made a difference because we could, take care of those little things mm. um, before they became big things. And half the time, if not more, it was, oh, that's how you interpreted that? No, 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 no. Hold on. Let me tell you how I really meant it. And so then it, it allowed for, you know, that other perspective or, um, you know, for us to really appreciate what the other person intended, even if it didn't land that way, you know, I would just, some really great juicy conversation. Yeah. Cause look, I mean, you know, what I'm, what I'm hearing really clearly is like, you know, for instance, and this is completely made up, but for instance, you know, in your past, if your dad was looking at his watch, it was because he had to go to work and leave. Right. And like he, right. or he wanted to go away, you know, he wanted to get away. And then that imprinted. Like mm -hmm. immediately it imprinted. And then if your spouse or your partner then looks at his watch and while you guys are in a conversation, you're triggered. And that's automatically what you make that mean, because historically that's what it's meant in the past. Where exactly. meanwhile, Dave just wanted to know what time it was. Right. Like literally know what time it was, not, you know, anything was missing or he had an appointment or get away from you or how long have we been here or because good grief, we're women, first of all. I mean, I don't know that it's exclusive to women, but, you know, we are like, we take one little thing and whoosh, run with it, right? We just, whoosh, and it could mean a hundred things and we're going to go for whatever is so familiar from the past. Yeah. 
and not exactly. necessarily be present to that it could be something completely in benign. Yep. You know, yeah. Yeah. So really great to get that clarity and also to to create the space versus being like, what are you looking at your watch for? Right, exactly. Why are you looking at your watch? Got to be somewhere. (laughs) Right? I mean, I can hear it, you know, versus being like, you know, you looking at your watch had me feel this way or this is how I interpreted. So like taking ownership of this is how I feel when you do that what's the actual, you know, what was yeah. that happening there and, and getting present to it. So really awesome. And it That's might too. be, you, right. It might be that you just want to really be in the conversation and you do have an appointment. So you just want to make sure. Yeah. Whatever it is. Right. Mm-hmm. It's and gosh, nine times out of 10, it's way more benign than what we make it up to be. <laughs> you know? For sure. <laughs> or some even bigger percentage than 90 percent but um so that's two huh um i think for me at least probably a a big one for me is um letting him have all his emotions and not making them anything about me right so if he's if he's grumpy you know not immediately going to he's upset with me like what did i do but just like allowing him to be grumpy and, and being sovereign over here, like allowing, allowing his feelings to be whatever his feelings are and, you know, offering support, offering to talk about it, you know, even asking if, you know, asking if, you know, Hey, are you upset with me or is it something else? But coming from a place of neutrality instead of, Fix him, make him okay, soothe him. Right, exactly. That I have to take care of it somehow or take any responsibility for it or any of that. Wow. Um, you know, Dave's a big guy, and so he's got big energy. And at the beginning, when he would get upset, it was like a black hole was opening and I was getting sucked in. And um, so then I would react to that, which then made him feel made wrong for having, you know, an upset and that would upset him even more. And it just, you know, we would just <laughs> go down this, this hole together. <laughs> and, and I remember the, the first time, like really being able to just observe it more than be in it with him. Mm. You know, I was still there as a support, but, but there was nothing wrong, right? He's allowed to be upset. Even if I don't think he's allowed to be upset, he's allowed to be upset, right? Like, even if I have some judgments about what he's upset about or that he's that upset about that little thing or whatever, you know, just noticing that and no- and owning it as mine and not also putting that over there on him. Um, wow. And, you know, and when I'm upset, he's fantastic at, you know, giving me my space and offering, you know, an ear if I want it. Um, so, you know, having him model that for me too was really big at the beginning. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Versus, you know, I can, I can totally see how that could be right. Because I mean, it just happened, um, you know, just the other day, you know, to, to where it was immediately, it was like, you know, the request that I made caused something uncomfortable over there with another person. And, it was because I asked that person to do a, to do a thing. And it, when I asked them to do it, I let them be responsible for, you know, if it didn't work, it didn't work. Right. But immediately, you know, I wanted to make that person okay with it. Yeah. And it was like, I did this to him. Right. Or, you know, yeah. And it was like, but I asked a question, you know, I, I made a request and they agreed and, and it, it's up to them, yeah. right? You know, and what, and I thank them for their contribution and for allowing it to, you know, to be there. And I got that they were uncomfortable with, you know, the result and they were given the opportunity to say that it didn't work for them or wouldn't work for them. But I immediately wanted to fix it and to apologize and to make them okay. And to, you know, and 
And that actually is disempowering. Like I can see where that would be like, um, you know, every time, if I was upset, every time I was upset and somebody either took that on themselves and, and said, you know, well, it's my fault, blah, 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 or, you know, or tried to fix it and make me okay and not actually allow me to be in those feelings, I could see how that could be really disempowering. Right. And, and just make you more upset and make me more upset. Like, you know, no, I'm, I'm, you know, stop trying to fix me. Allow me to have my upset. I'll do my best to not get it on you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cause that's the other piece of it is to, you know, not have an impact of your upset right. be over there on the other person. Yeah. I right? like to be responsible for that. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was one of the things I've also gained a lot of responsibility in is, is I used to withdraw when I was upset. And, um, and so then I've, I've left him with nothing and, you know, he's over there wondering and guessing. And I think we've, we've gotten better, both of us, you know, he'll say, you seem frustrated. Is it me? (laughs) And, um, you know, and I'm, I'm still working on being able to say, yes, it's you. If it really is him, you know, I'm, I'm getting better, but I'm still not where I want to be. And I sh- still, I'm sure I'm not where he would like me to be so that, you know, he is sure. But if it's definitely not him, at least it gives me an opportunity to say, no, 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 it's definitely not you. And, you know, he's like, okay, fine. You know, enjoy your upset. Like, I'm here if you need me and I'm glad it's not me. Right? So, you know, instead of in the past, uh, it really was a, he had to chase me down and, um, you know, so it was a lot of work and, and definitely kind of codependent. And, um, sure. you know, so that's been something. And to add a fourth thing, I think this is really important for, for us and for everybody, especially parents is we do this. We get away, just us. And he has been phenomenal at making sure that we do that. Um, mm. you know, I brought the timeshare into the marriage and he he grabbed it with both hands and made it his, you know, like, and it was great. I mean, he will, we get points that we can spend, uh, you know, on different, at different resorts, right? So, so he will, he will calculate it and milk it so that you know we <sighs> use up like every single possible point as best we can um wow. now we have a plethora because of an entire year of not traveling but <laughs> um yeah you know like he booked this 15 months out um because that's the only way we were able to get in here and you know things like that that i just i i I don't have the the foresight, right? The forward <laughs> thinkingness that he does in that. Yeah. And so it's great. So I just turn that over to him. You know, sometimes it's a surprise trip. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, you know, something we talk about, but inevitably, you know, we, we get away way more because yeah, he's driving that boat. And and it's so important, I think, for for us. And he's much more present to the gap than I am when, when it occurs. And so to be able to close that gap continually um, is, yeah. is critical. And for us now, you know, he's looking for a new job. We're looking to move. Like we've got all these really big things happening. And uh, so this There's week. There's a call to like, you know, put, put, your, put that on hold. Exactly. It feels irresponsible. This is like, right. But, you know, with all the upcoming things that are going to be in between you, right. And like, you know, all the busyness for you two to be really grounded and solid and connected. Exactly. Move into it together. Like I can really hear like you've, you know, this has created the opportunity for you guys to lock arms and, you know, and just move through it together powerfully from a connected connectedness versus there's so much happening. I don't have time for you. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's a regroup. It's a recharge. And that's why, you know, we, we very briefly talked about, do we cancel this? Um, Because, you know, Florida is pandemic. What pandemic? Um, 
<laughs> and, you know, it doesn't exactly feel safe down here. Um, and, you know, we finally decided. So even if we go down and stay the entire time in our room, you know, which we haven't, but, uh, you know, still just the getting away is, is so worth it. And, uh, yeah, it's been good. We're you here. You got a fun rental car, too, so that you're not. Oh, my deal. gosh. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know what color that is. It's not <laughs> it's like quite neon, only yellow. Like, it's like neon yellow with a touch of green. Right? Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah, a name so we that color. To, I can't place it right now, but there's a name for that color. Obnoxious. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> but it's been so great. Like, like, what a fantastic growth opportunity the car provided, you know, because it's so yeah. flashy. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> what are people thinking? What are they, you know, the people give us these looks and, you know, the little kids at the, at the gas station are like, whoa, look at that car. And, you know, <laughs> and then I feel like, you know, oh my gosh, it's such an opportunity for me to deal with my stuff. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I should look sexier getting out of this thing. I should, you know, <laughs> look, whatever. <laughs> Do they think we're really rich? We're really not rich. Oh, what's that thing about being rich that's got me, huh? <laughs> you know, like it's just, it's a constant growth opportunity. So, yeah, I'm actually like, you know, because I mean, there is a name for that, that <laughs> You're color. The name. And no, it's like, but it's like a really pretty name that, yeah. Um, anyway, I'll. Yeah, because it's like a yellow green, but there is a true name for it. And I love the name of it. So I'm like, I'm all like into it now. Uh, I'll think of it. It'll pop up. Chartreuse. That's the is word it? I'm looking for. Chartre- I don't know if that's the right name for it, but um, char- I was thought chartreuse. There's no way I can spell thing. that. All right, wait. Siri is going to help me. Chartreuse. <laughs> Let's go to images. Oh, look at that. I mean, yeah, that, that really, I mean, versions of chartreuse. I think that the picture on Instagram, it's close. Yeah. I just like that word, chartreuse. chartreuse. It's been a fun vehicle to drive for sure. Um, we've, uh, we've driven a little closer to the speed limit because of the color, though. <laughs> So just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure it's like driving a neon sign. You know? <laughs> hey, here we are. <laughs> At least everybody gets to see like, you know, about what color it is, but it is, it's significant. <laughs> Perfect. I was like, it is significant. It's significant. It's You're out there. We've only had the top down once. Uh, we went to Key West uh, for our anniversary on Tuesday. And, and so on the way, on the way back. Uh, to the resort we had the top down and it was full moon and it was beautiful so yeah oh yeah i saw that picture that you took of the full moon down there extraordinary yeah. you go to the tip of the Thanks. u.s like i love that right? you know that's so neat and it was really wild because you know when i was down there there was a line like yeah it's probably like an hour long line to stand there to get a picture taken an hour long. Oh, yeah. No, it was long. I mean, like you were w- up the street waiting to take a picture of, at the end there of were, the. Yep. There were probably about 10 people when we were there. <laughs> so I guess right. we were. I was lucky. like, whoa. We did not stand in line. We d- opted for, okay, we don't need all the writing on that, whatever it is. <laughs> you know, we'll just take a picture over here. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh. Yeah. yeah, the keys are extraordinary. I've got some friends down there. I'm going to create, create a trip. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's really what's my coming up. I want to spread my wings some. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I don't feel like we've done, you know, we haven't necessarily made the most of being down here just because Dave still has to work and, um, you know, but we've definitely made the best of chillaxing <laughs> yesterday we we went to uh 
uh, a seafood restaurant that, oh my gosh, if anybody is in Marathon, highly recommend Brutus. Oh my gosh. Um, fresh, 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 and just seasoned and cooked perfectly and really tasty. But it was the first time because uh, that we, we actually ate out because every time we tried, um, the restaurants were either closing at like eight or nine o'clock, like really early. Um, we asked the waitress yesterday, we, we went at like, you know, old people hours, you know, <laughs> we were there at, I don't know, four thirty or five. Um, and, uh, uh, no offense to old people. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was, that's been our challenge is actually, you know, eating out. So we, we sat in their little tiki bar outside. Mm. There was a beautiful breeze. There's chickens everywhere. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like pigeons, you know, in New York, but it's chickens. <laughs> so that they just, they roam around the, the tables outside looking for scraps and things. And, and then an iguana and, maybe a, a young iguana or a female iguana. I don't know. There were two, two lizards that were on the bushes next to us. So they were hanging out with us. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. Did you, um, so, did you get the opportunity to check out their, their um, beach? Because there's, you know, the keys, I mean, for people who don't know, like the keys actually have no beach, but they have like yeah. a handmade one. And it's like this little small area. Of we, we've really it's neat. we've is it okay we'll have to check it out yeah so we might yeah. do that today today's our last full day um and uh yeah we you know I, I was surprised by that i was expecting beach down here and you know our resort has has a dock where you can you know bring in your your watercraft there are so many yachts and things that we saw on the way down it's like i've never seen so many yachts before so yeah yeah it is definitely we saw a house a little house in key west uh it was three and a half million so yep. <clears throat> glad we're looking to buy where we're looking to buy oh um, yes our the partner south you know, the higher it gets <laughs> Well, especially down here. I mean, you know, land is definitely at a premium. Um, we and it's party to central. Our, and Key West is definitely party central. Marathon, not so much. Um, you know, we're halfway, uh, you know, between Key Largo and, and Key West. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's very much not party central here. <laughs> I think that's why we haven't been able to find food late at night. <laughs> Ah, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we drove down to Key West and our parking attendant was from Hungary and we stood and talked to him for a while Aww. and he told us that about a, a one bedroom, one bath that he's he's on a construction crew that they're renovating and they're getting ready to list it for just under a million dollars. And it has no yard. It's one bedroom, one bath. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Talk about location, location, location. Exactly. Exactly, but it's so cute down here. For sure. Love the buildings and but yeah. It's uh yeah. And while we're down here, we're still looking at houses up there. We toured two of them on Monday on our first day here, but unfortunately, neither of them was the one. The one is coming. The one is coming, exactly. The one is coming. So Dave's going to find out about his job first so that we can have financing all squared away. Nice. Don't need to change anything. That's what I'm declaring. So nice. Yeah. There was one house. Um, we almost put an offer in and then finally we decided no. Um, it was a 1969 house, original owners, um, you know, definitely would have been a great house, but there was just something, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't everything. And, you know, I went back and forth, oh, not back and forth and, right, exactly. We decided we're not going to settle. And so, yeah, you know, bathrooms were really small. Even if we had renovated them, you know, the size of the bathrooms wouldn't have changed. So, you yeah, know. you had to like restructure the whole house. It sounds like, yeah, really have the bathrooms work well, no fireplace. So mm -hmm. we do really want a fireplace. The yard was beautiful and shady. And I mean, they had a lot of potential and. 
I, I am not a buy a house and live in it while we fix it up person is yeah. what I decided. <laughs> now, if I had lo- loads of money and could buy it and get somebody else to fix it up and then we move into it, okay, no problem. But <laughs> uh, so I have decided I'm getting trained in patience. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. And once I decided that, like, a lot of my, I, I kind of had some grump going on on Tuesday or Monday I or bet. whatever. And uh, I just declared, okay, I'm being pa- trained in patience. It was great because once I declared it, it was like, okay, I'm good now. Well, I think this is my, um, cool. I I ordered groceries this morning. So, um, I mean, not to like totally squirrel, but um, yeah, actually just totally squirrel. Um, my, my folks called me the other day. They were, um, they're both, they both have some sort of cold or something. Um, and you know, my mom is like, don't come up. I don't want you to get sick. We're okay. The neighbor is helping out, you know? And I was like, okay, got it. And then my dad called ranting. I mean, literally like upset. I don't care what your mother says. She doesn't know what she's talking about. We need some help up here. Because he's from Jersey. He's a hardcore Jersey guy. And of course, when he's sick, the accent gets deeper. And I'm like, okay, what do you need? And so he starts talking about food. And I'm like, okay, so you need groceries. Okay, great. And this had happened once before where I had driven an hour. They live an hour away to really get them groceries. I mean, ultimately to get them groceries. And so um, he wasn't able to tell me what it is that he needed or wanted. And he was like, I don't know. And your mother's asleep right now. I can't. Your mother's asleep. All right. Well, have my mother call me when she gets, when she wakes up and we'll figure out the grocery thing. All right, great. So mom calls and they needed five things. So I Instacarted it and it was delivered within an hour and a half. Nice. And then he, he's, he was upset again. And so, you know, right. He wanted some more meals and and they don't realize technology, right. He's like 78 and she's 72, right. They don't realize the technology that I can just like magically with this magic little box, make life happen. And, um, and so she sent me a grocery list by email this morning. And so I, I Instacarted it and it'll be to their house within the hour. And while I was there, I was like, oh, you know, I need like five things. And I don't feel like getting dressed and going to the store and doing all that stuff. Why don't I Instacart too? And my groceries are being delivered as we speak. I mean, I forget how, how like easy I can make my life. I mean, there's a certain realm of, you know, yeah, I could go to the store and just get out of the house. But, you know, there's other places I would rather go besides the grocery store. I could take a walk around the block in the sun and do that. How cool. Yeah. Way nicer. So, you know, and it, and it, it took something for me to not drop everything and run up there. Mm. And I'm learning my big learning. And the whole thing is like, you know, one of the, one of the reasons that I moved to Charlotte from, you know, where I lived was, you know, I was really enmeshed with my folks. It was, you know, we would all do dinner together often and, you know, and, um, we lived separately, but that was really it. I mean, there was a lot of enmeshing and, um, you know, even when I go up to visit them, it really takes me something to not want to take over and not want to, you know, if I lived here, I could take care of them and blah, 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 blah. And, and I even had a conversation with my mom when I was there this past Sunday or Saturday. And I was like, look, I am clear. You guys do not want me to come live here and give up my life taking care of you. And I don't know how to be supportive and contribute to your lives and not live here and not give over to let me just take care of you because I'm a nurturer. I'm a caretaker. That's right. So hanging out there is like, woo. So having groceries delivered, I called the neighbor and I touched base with him to check in with him and see how I could support him. If there's anything he needed, I called, you know, my best friend across the street, let her know she can check in on them, creating team and teamwork. And it doesn't need to look like that. I do it, you know, and also created a conversation with my mom. Like this is really an awareness that 
this is her being full-time caregiver for him. It's expiring. Yeah. And they need to have a conversation with their primary care doctor to see what's next. Because it's, it's not going to be me and it's not going to be her. Right. So, you know, that really takes something to be in that conversation, but at the same time, it was really freeing. Good. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, let them be adults. I've got it that, you know, now I'm becoming the mom and that's not true. You know, um, you know, my dad got a little jolt of mortality the other day. Um, my, his, his sister's husband, my uncle Gary, um, passed away on the night last, um, from cancer. He'd been dealing with it for quite a while and he beat it for a little bit. And then, you know, it, he was like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm done. Um, so, you know, he's got a little bit of heart sickness there and grief going on as well as being sick. So, um, yeah. So creating that freedom for myself and for them and empowering them like that's, that's been cool. Really has been cool. Yeah. I I hear that there was an either or, and now you have both and. Yeah. Right. Like either you can move there and give up on your life and totally take care of them, or you can have your life and you're not taking care of them. And then you're, you know, you've got whatever story you have about being a bad dog. Exactly. Yeah. And instead you can do both. I can actually do both. And I got really clear, somebody randomly, um, you know, because as I'm discovering, where am I going to move to, right? There is a lake in, in that, you know, in that town. And, um, and, you know, like, when you're thinking about it, you just say things that sound good. But when somebody says something randomly, and then you're just in the reaction of it, then you're really clear, right? So somebody said something the other day, um, I was distracted. I was doing something else and they were like, yeah, well, maybe when you move to this town, blah, blah, blah. And I went, no, I won't. And I went, (laughs) obviously I'm not going there. (laughs) Like, no, like, no, I am clear. That is not, that is not where I'm going. So it's, it's narrowing itself down, you know, the, the, the opportunities and the choices and things like that. It's actually, it's creating itself you know, me, me yep. what actually works for me, just like you with your house. It's like, I know. you know, what feels, you know, what would I be tolerating? Cause would I want a life there without my folks? No, I didn't like yeah. it there when I lived there before <laughs> I was content, but I didn't, I wasn't thriving there. I, I love the culture of being near Charlotte. I love being near a city. I don't want to be in a city but I love being really close to a city that I can Uber, that I've got friends that I can go to their house and park and right. And, and still be in a, you know, serene environment. So um, what's been calling to me the last few days is go look and see, go look and see what's available right in the realm of a lake house. Go check it out. So yeah, I've been, I've been called to, you know, maybe check out some websites and things like that and just see what's available. And then last Sunday I went to, um, I went to a friend's house, um, to have some lunch and it turns out she is, she's like a landlord, but she also runs like multiple Airbnbs and she's like, let's you and I have a conversation. Let's see if we can get you qualified. Let's see what's there. I'm like, it was never even once on my radar. Cause I'm in debt settlement, right? Not even remotely on my radar that I could even look down that path. Right. Being in debt settlement means you got nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on paycheck to paycheck or savings. Like you pay cash. Right. So, you know, um, so that's cool. I was like, oh, that didn't even occur as an opportunity. I could actually have that conversation. Nice. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the big thing that showed up this week, Marjorie, huge. In that visit on Sunday or on Saturday, when I went up, I I had a really amazing conversation with a girlfriend of mine. um, And I was talking about, you know, like what's next for my, my future as far as career, like, what do I contribute to the world? And we started talking about my, um, you know, I'm 25 year hair professional. And here's that like either or thing again, right? Like having the blinders on, like it can only look this way or that way. Hmm. 
I could either go back behind the chair and do hair again. <sighs> <laughs> can tell that that really inspires you. <laughs> or I could teach at a school because I've got my instructor's license. I could teach at a school. I oh, mean, that's contribution. And she said, well, do they have coaches for hairdressers? And I went, no, no. It's either a sales consultant that has great advice. It's a brand representative. Again, that it's product-based, right? Like it's, you know, buy the products and, and can, right? But it's not about the service provider and who they're being and how they're being. Mm. And any conversation that exists like that is exists on a mass scale. Like there's, you know, almost like a Brene Brown, right? Like you mm -hmm. don't have one-on-one -on -one coaching with Brene Brown. Brene Brown speaks to the masses. You take your piece and go do with it what right. you will, right? But every other industry has one-on-one -on -one coaching. They have a business coach. They have a committed listener. They have all these opportunities that speak their language, that understand the industry, right? Yeah. Sweetie, when I tell you, oh, that idea sat there. I woke up the next morning at 7 a.m. and I started writing. And by 9 a.m. I had 10 pages Wow. of my whole business plan. And it flowed out of me as if it had been waiting to come out all these years, like been waiting, just sitting there uncorked. And I, the Google form, the, the initial survey for, right. And then the people popped into my head of who I want to do a beta test with. And I mean, it's all just moving and flowing. And, and the only area that, that is, is right there that I've just simply not been with yet is how much to charge, how to have it be affordable and still, you know, have it be an income and right. And like, right. Because here's the thing. Here's what it looks like for hair professionals. They plug away behind the chair. They might do some social media stuff here and there, right? But they either become Insta famous and learn to do all the social media stuff and then, you know, or go, to, go on stage, like be one of those you know, like famous hairdressers. But there's this whole group of hair people that really just want to be amazing service providers, and do great hair and have people feel great in their chair and live a great life. Right? Like they, that's what they want. And it, you know, those people are not being addressed. Everything that I, when I did the research, it was all about how to market and advertise yourself. Yeah. But what about once you get them in your chair, how do you manage them? You know, how do you manage a clientele? How do you have a, a, an appointment book that really works for your life. Mm. Like what does your perfect day look like? How do you create that? How do you have clients in your chair that you really love that pay you what you're worth that respect you enough to keep their appointments? <laughs> right. Yeah. And to make appointments in the future, like, you know, because right now, you know, especially with COVID, there's a lot of dancing around, you know, there's the next Insta, Insta famous person versus somebody like me who's like, no, I want to go to the same person every four weeks and I want them right. And I want the two of us to grow together. And I want, right. Like, so as a client, and I am so clear that this is, this is my contribution to the world. And by contributing to the service providers, I contribute to their clients. Yeah. Right. Like, absolutely and change the paradigm nice yeah and i'm like oh i'm so excited <laughs> i am it's and like i said it's just it's flowing it's really so I, I hear part coaching part consultant part mentor yeah. yeah nice yeah that i can i can do from anywhere and you know i can have tiered pricing and I can have session pricing. And, you know, I haven't even delved into that realm yet. I mean, you know who I'm going to call for that, you know, <laughs> Miss SB. Um, but, you know, I, I really want to get that fine-tuned. And it's, it's really in conversations. I mean, I know 
It's all planned out in my head. I know exactly how it looks. Like, I, and not even like a forcing an outcome, know how it looks, right? But like, nope. And when it's crystal clear like that, you know, that's just, yeah. I am I am a firm believer that everything we do, no matter how disjointed it looks, it all then comes together. Like, For you know, sure. Dave was a drug counselor. He was a middle school teacher, you know. You wouldn't think those two would go together. And now he's training cardiologists, you know, <laughs> like and he jokes that they're a, it's not very different than teaching middle schoolers, you know. Yeah, so. right. I mean, even doing this admin work, it completely supports the right. coaching and, and having structures and right, like what's needed in that area. I mean, it all does, like you said, it'll really come together. So it's cool. Yeah. You want to include everybody in on that sound that keeps happening? Oh, yes. Sorry. I keep <laughs> so um, I, I no it. problem. Just so people know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you, so I fidget my my hands. They, they like to be doing something. And um, so I've got two I've got two little fidget things that I play with. Um, one of them is my my angel stone. Bring that close to the camera. So it's oh, my cool. angel stone. Right. So it's, you know, my connection to spirit and they you know, talk to me. And then the other is um, it's it's um, um, Moldavite, Moldavite, Moldavite. But it's like a little chip of Moldavite. And Moldavite is a um, it's a stone and it's it's the transformative stone. There's there's something about it that it um, the story is, at least that it it became so from a, um, a meteorite that hit the earth and there's like a limited amount of it. So like this little chunk is fairly expensive, you know, something that would be this size would be hundreds of dollars. Um, so yeah. And it's, it's meant to, um, it's, it's transformative. And if you wear it, like you actually have to be careful with it. (laughs) Like it's that kind of transformative. So I just, I fiddle with it and then I, I have to put it down. <laughs> so that's what those that's what those little noises are that you keep hearing. <laughs> so when I was at it. Dawn's house a couple of weeks ago, she hadn't even taken it out of the container because she was <laughs> afraid of it. So of course, then comes Marjorie. Go get it, go get it, go get it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> transformation's awesome go out and play it's really not kryptonite you know it's it's not going to be that strong (laughs) yeah i definitely had it as kryptonite to my well my ego had it as kryptonite (laughs) right (laughs) my ego is like touch it and everything in your life transforms in an instant oh god (laughs) i can't i mean Brace yourself. Yeah. Right. But you know, the more I'm 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 beginning to get really playful with moving now. I'm like, oh, what is it? Where am I gonna be? And I I keep journaling. Well, like vision boarding, like when something will pop up that I'm like, oh, this is gonna be in my house. Oh, this is the image of that, you know. And it's just it manifests itself on paper. Nice. Or it, you know, it's an image that I get in my head, and so I just draw some random drawing and it's, you know, and it'll it just shows up and it's like, it's creating itself and it's me get out of the way. (laughs) That's the message I keep getting. Get out of the way. Yeah. Get out of the way. That's what slows us down from manifesting is we are in the way. (laughs) The universe is out there going, okay, I'll wait. (laughs) But there's like, uh, and I say, but um, I just got really clear. I said, but, um, (laughs) You know, I'm very action oriented or I know myself to be. I occur for myself as very action oriented. Keep going, pull yourself by your bootstraps and move forward. And like, you know, and you know what this and I may have said it before and I'm I'm not sure. Sometimes people need to hear things multiple times. I certainly need to say things multiple times. (laughs) Is that what it has always looked like is, okay, I'm not going to be here. Where am I going to go? Mm-hmm. And then take those actions and like create a next space for me to go to just, you know, take up space. And 
and I haven't known any other way. Yeah. You know, and who knows what could have, well, I don't want to, it's not like a regret conversation, but it's like, that was me being in the way of the universe providing everything was me taking actions and not being present to what do I want and allowing what I want to be delivered. You know, I've really had it like, you know, I've got to make stuff happen. Yeah. I'm all powerful and I need to actually make it happen. And, you know, and, and the next phase of, of dancing in the unknown. That's my, that's my hashtag, by the way, hashtag dancing in the unknown. Um, and still taking actions and still being in action, still being, um, you know, doing things. So it's not like I'm just sitting around waiting for the angels to deliver me a house. Right. right. How it occurred for me is like, yeah, my house is just going to be delivered to me. There are actions to take. That didn't work very well for the wicked witch of the East or whoever it was, you know, when yeah. the house is delivered. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't really work at all. Does it? No. Well, and that's just it, right? Like there's, there's, there's so much out there, like your thoughts become things and, um, you know, you can just manifest it, but it's not like, okay, do me like I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's how, especially skeptics, you know, that's how they view that belief is, yeah, sure. You know, you're just sitting around twiddling your thumbs, waiting for some big delivery. That's so there what are, I like there, to move before. For right. sure. And, and I think we've all, you know, gone through that, you know, and there are actions to take. And, and that's been part of it this week for me, right? Like that house. I kept, when I, when I, first of all, it wasn't even on my radar. Like we went to look at it, you know, virtually because it was on the market and it might surprise us. Right. But the other house that we went to look at, we were sure that was the one. And it kind of looked like somebody had taken the pieces of a house and, you know, shaken them up and just kind of dropped them. Like it oh was, just, it was chunky, right? Like it, it didn't flow. And, and uh, I was like, Oh no. Like, but the photographer who took pictures of this house did a phenomenal job, right? On the screen, it looked like the house. All right, everybody. So we seem to have lost Marjorie, and that can sometimes happen when you're on vacation. Um, oh, she's back. All right. I joined from my phone. <laughs> awesome. I was just saying goodbye to everybody. So we can edit that out, and that's awesome. Yay, internet. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, and we're about at time anyway, um, but I, I do think what we were talking about is uh, is so pertinent, right? Like manifesting requires actions. <laughs> yeah. And it's not, I think that the piece that you were kind of pointing to that we didn't say was that it's it's also in the world of holding it that, you know, the perfect house is there, but not holding it like the perfect house looks exactly like this, 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 yeah. this, and this, right? Because the perfect house may actually be better than that or have more features than we think that, than we can even think of. Or, you know, I mean, I think about when I, I say that I manifested Dave and I wrote three pages of what I wanted a man and, and then I put them away and I found them a month or so after I met him and I read it and I just, I, I was bawling by the end of it because he was almost everything on that list. But what I realized is there were a bunch of things that I hadn't even thought to put on that list that uh -huh. he also was. Wow. And, you know, so in the world of manifesting, there is the, as my, my uh, intuitive healer 
that I see once a month says, she says, you still have to do the human experience. Yeah. Like she told me that our house is, has already been chosen for us. And, but we still have to go through the human experience of looking at houses, putting in offers. Um, and I was, yeah, so, there's like learning in that, right. you know, I mean, like just being with it, you know, I don't have to say where my house is and look, it stuff is getting out of the way yep. naturally, right? Like just getting clear on, you know, that that's shown up. And then, um, you know, I don't have to say exactly how big my house is, but I do, you know, I do know that a minimum of two bedrooms and I do know that a minimum of two bathrooms. Yeah. And anything else or outside of that can just show up. That'd be awesome. So that, that $1 million house in Key West isn't, isn't it for you, huh? I don't know. Could be. Well, it's only one bed, one bath. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, no. No, because it's, you know, I mean, it is about location for me, certainly. Um, and <laughs> there's like, you know, there are certain things that are must-haves, you know. But outside of that, like, you know, because what it would look like before is I'm looking for this thing and just keep trudging through until I found this thing. And the universe is like, but, 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 I mean, there's this, I mean, like, you know, I got this going on over here, but you've committed so much of your time and energy to over there. Then, uh, well, I guess I'm going to have to give you that because you've actually cut off all the space. I can't give you this. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. So I don't know. And I'm still kind of like hanging out. I don't know. And now, but I'm like, I don't know. I know. I don't know. Yeah. And when we hold on too tight of what it should look like, it often, I mean, as you're pointing to, right, like it cuts off the above and beyond from what we can think of, what we can imagine that may actually be out there for us to attract. Exactly. Like, you know, like I even got with, you know, I could either go to my parents' house or stay here and be selfish. Right. Like it looked that way, be guilty, be selfish, yeah. or I could give up everything and go to their house and take care of them. them oh. <sighs> How can I be supportive in a contribution? Okay. What do they need? Okay. They need groceries. Okay. Well, I can get groceries to them. Done. Yeah. Yay. So very cool. All right. And my friend, well, um, life is There's beginning so to improve. In that, right. Like I think that's, that's as soon as I, as soon as I stopped waffling and mm-hmm. really just listened, mm-hmm. okay, does this house feel like, you know, I'm yeah. leaning into it, right? Like, as yeah. soon as I said, you know, I don't think this is the house for us, I, I had this experience of, like, a load lifted. <sighs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Sorry, it took me so long to get here, but I got here. <laughs> yep. Surrendering to source. Yep. Oh, it's beautifully windy. There's a beautiful breeze going on outside. It's so pretty. Yeah. I may have to take a walk this afternoon. Excellent. I love well, you very much. I love you very much. And I can't wait to hear where both of us are in our house searches next week. I oh, know. So much happens in a week. And my coaching business and your coaching business and, you know, the space that we're creating and all the love that's showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Have a phenomenally manifesting, powerful listening to spirit week. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Love you.